everybody, thank you for joining me for your practice today. We're going to be working into a beautiful practice focusing on connection. You will only need either a pillow or a bolster to practice with today. You can decide if you have both. I'm going to pop them off to one side though and we're going to begin our session lying down on our backs. So finding a comfortable Shavasana position resting into the earth, taking a moment to arrive in your practice today. We're working with the awareness of connection, meaning we will be connecting to our environment, outside of us and also our internal environment. And the first place we can really focus in on is that connection our body has with the ground, creating stability, safety, feeling those points of contact your body has with the earth so that we can then explore beyond. We can think about the earth as being the mother, that mother earth, and we feel safe and secure when connected to her. And this means that we then have the ability to run off and play, to explore an adventure, knowing that we can always come back to Mother Earth for security and support. So that is our foundation. And then we can start to connect to the physical sensations in the body, the movements of the body. So looking at the anatomy and how we're all connected as one. Really, we're just one big muscle that's twisted and folded into lots of different muscles. So if you think about a balloon at a party when we were younger and how they twist and kind of tie that balloon to create different shapes. This is us. We're a balloon and we can just unravel all those shapes to create one big hole. So thinking about how all the parts of our bodies are connected as one. We can also notice the breath, this connecting awareness of our outside environment being drawn into our inside environment and then our inside environment being pushed back out into our external environment. Connecting to the rhythm of your breath and the movement that it makes. And then as you practice today, I want you to become aware of anything else that you feel connected to, whether it is feeling connected to the sounds around you. Maybe there's one particular awareness of your body that you feel strongly connected to. It could be a pain in the shoulder, or it could be a particular emotion that's rising up, or a thought, or even a flash of light, a color in your mind's eye. Allow yourself to connect to anything and everything that you choose to see and feel. Everything that we experience in our practice has the space to be here today. And as we digest all that information, let's just come back to feeling connected to the earth again before we move our bodies. We are held and we are supported in this position. And sliding the right foot into the ground, you can leave the arms out as wide as they'd like to be. We'll push the foot into the earth, lifting the right butt cheek off the ground into a one kind of legged bridge position Rolling slightly to the left side, maybe the head rolls over to the left a little bit. We'll lower the butt cheek back down to the floor and allow the right knee to open softly to the right side. Repeat this, foot grounds, lift the hip up, push into the foot so the bum floats off the floor. We might slightly roll to the left side. Let the movement be free, feel the connections from the foot right up to the crown of the head, allowing that 
Right knee to open out to the side. Let's take it one more time. Moving in your own pace, feeling how your body ripples and rolls. You can open or close your eyes. Good. Let's bring the right foot to the floor and slide the left foot to join. We'll extend the right leg up to the sky and circle into the right ankle. Maybe actually looking at your foot, moving your toes, using the connecting awareness of your eyesight to see what we are connecting to. Vision is so powerful. It's not just there to distract, it's there to connect us. So we can see danger, but also see beauty. Now taking hold of your right knee softly, we're gonna use the connecting awareness of touch, bending and straightening this knee and feeling your knee joint, maybe noticing any movements that feel interesting, smooth or wonky. I have a cracky knee, so my knee's going clunk and clunk. Feeling that, appreciating its incredible ability to hinge, the strength and support that this knee gives us. And bending that knee, let's start to take little rotations into the right hip. We're just lubricating the right joint, right hip joint, allowing there to be an awareness of the range of motion you already have without having to force or stress or strain into that rotation. You can go both ways. You can play with movement of your hip. And then drop. Extend that right leg all the way back to the earth, arms can open wide. And we push the left foot, rolling slightly to the right hip, maybe letting the head roll with you. And then back onto the hip, opening up the left knee. You can move slow or fast. It can be different from one side to the other. Just feeling the experience connecting to what you're experiencing in your body, your thoughts, your feelings, your energy. Good, regrounding both feet into the earth, the left leg will lift up to the sky. And again, come back to looking at your foot, your toenails, how you see the tendons moving as you wiggle your toes. The ankle might feel stiffer. We can see the rotation. We can see the difference. Taking hold of the knee with the hands, so gently gripping around the knee and bending and straightening. Feeling into this joint, noticing the muscles that help aid the movements of the thighs. Also feeling the back of the knee where the popular tear is, that muscle at the back. Maybe noting the patella, the kneecap, and how it might move or stabilize. Is it warm? Is it cold, your knee? And then keeping the knee bent, we will start to add little bits of movement into that hip. Remember, we're just lubricating, oiling the hip so that it has as best range of motion as we need. We don't need to be super flexible in our hips, especially not right now, as we're just warming up. We're just exploring what is here already in our hips, having that gentle awareness, feeling into your body. Grounding that left foot back to the floor, hands will come to the lower abdomen. Take a moment to connect inwards to the breath. Watching the belly rise as we inhale and fall as we exhale. We're going to start to increase movement with this using the pelvic movement. So as we inhale, we'll arch the spine, pushing the belly out. Your chin might tuck slightly to your chest as your elongated neck expands. And then as we exhale, we'll push the lower back into the floor, keeping the tailbone, so it's not lifting the hips, we're just letting the tailbone look away. And then again, inhale, belly will rise up, hands might separate slightly. And as we exhale, back pushes into the floor, hands might slide back together. And just keep this going with your own breath, your own rhythm. We're starting to connect the entire spine, so your head may bobble up and down. We're connecting to the breath, so allowing the rhythm of your breath to move with the diaphragm, the pelvic floor, the transverse abdominal muscles. 
final breath. Come back to somewhere neutral. And then we'll roll onto the left side completely, bringing the palms together, knees together and hips stacked. If you do need a pillow under your head, you can take one. Now we're gonna press the palms together to begin with. Notice the sensation in your hands. Remember, we've got a lot of sensation in our hands. So feeling the palms together, connecting. We'll slide the top arm away as far as you can reach and then rotate and circle that arm into your twist. Don't worry if the shoulder doesn't come to the floor. And then come back. You can slide your hand down the arm, connecting to the skin all the way to the palm and then reach away again, twisting and opening, creating some space in the chest, or oh, a nice crack in the spine, and again. Let your head move in the direction it wants to move in. Good, as we bring the palms back together, let's interlace the fingers, rolling back onto the spine. Hands can float above the chest. And we'll start to make rotations into your wrist joints, moving slowly, feeling into the joints, moving them in directions that they want to go, seeing what they can do as opposed to what they can't. And then flipping the palms, keeping the fingers interlaced and push and stretch the palms up to the ceiling opening up through your fingers. My God, it feels good to stretch your hands out. We often have them so cramped and closed. It feels wonderful to open and expand them. What can we connect to as we stretch our hands? And then releasing, let's roll to the other side. Knees stack, palms together. And we slide the top arm away and open and twist. And again, coming through, sliding, open and twist. Moving with your own awareness, your own speed, feeling your body as you move, connecting to all the different elements you want to bring in today. And then the next time you bring the palms together, let's interlace the fingers again. Roll onto the spine, hands stay above the chest and we'll make movements into the wrists. If your elbows bend slightly, that's great. Just see what's going on. You can use your eyes. You might want to close your eyes and feel the sensation. How do you want to connect to your body today? Let's flip the palms up to the sky, take a lovely stretch again into the palms, the fingers. And then as we release, we'll bring the palms to the heart center and connect the actual heartbeat. Your own heartbeat is unique. Nobody else has the same heartbeat rhythm that you do. Similar to your thumbprint, it is unique to your experience, to you as a person. So listening in to the beating heart, your beating heart. We'll stretch our legs away, arms reach over the head, take a really big yawn if you need one, maybe a sigh. And we're gonna curl chin to chest. We're rolling up to the sit bones. You can use your hands if you need to, your elbows, your palms to come up to seated. As we lift the arms up to the sky, we're gonna roll back down from the tailbone, sucking the belly in to curl through the spine. You can use your hands or you can roll down through each part of your spine until you land back into the earth, arms reach over the head. And again, rolling up chin to chest. Remember, you can use the hands or just use the core. Connecting to how the body moves, it doesn't have to move smoothly. It can move with little jaggedy edges and a little bit of tension. That's fine. Arms come up and over the head. One more time, we're going to roll back up. Remember, you can use your arms. Chin to chest, pushing all the way back up. 
arms reach up one last time as we interlace the fingers take them behind the head and make little semi circles or full circles in the upper body just protecting the head from not going back too far feeling the upper back the shoulders the neck mm, maybe going the other direction what can we feel and connect to as we move the body this way? Bring the head back to the centre. We'll draw the soles of the feet together. Maybe grabbing hold of the ankles, shins. We'll just bounce the knees up and down. Feeling that connection between the hips and the tummy. So your psoas muscles connecting to the hip area, the front of the thigh, coming all the way up into the spine. So you may feel that connection from your lower body, your legs, into your torso. Don't worry if you can't feel it, but observe what we can feel or explore as we bounce our knees up and down. Taking a moment to pause, we'll start to turn to one side. Little mermaid twist, knees come towards each other. We'll twist over, gazing over the shoulder, Feeling that lovely deep rotation the whole way through your back. And then we'll go the other way. You can move smoothly from side to side. Or you can stay and pause on each side and hold it. Not being afraid to allow your body to move in the way that it needs to move. As humans, we like to copy and there's nothing wrong with that. But having that rich experience that is your own whilst practicing with others can be really rewarding. So although we might be doing similar things, we're not doing the same. We're allowing our experience to be unique to our own needs. And that's our connection. And then we'll come back to seated. Let's cross at the ankles, reach the fingertips out wide. And we'll drop left ear, left shoulder stretching through the right side of the neck. It can be so tight down our necks and we're feeling that connection from the head to the shoulder, how it connects all the way down. Slowly lift the head back to the center and drop the other way, right ear, right shoulder. Feel the left side of the neck explore and expanding with sensation. One side might feel tighter than the other, and this is just what we're noticing and connecting with. Maybe making little circles, rotations in the head, in the neck. It can be slow and smooth. Move how you would need to move today. Good. And then let's make our way back to the centre. Take a moment to pause. Is there that one thing that's starting to really become aware in our conscious mind? That one connecting element that keeps returning. It can be a word, a feeling, a part of the body. Don't worry if there is nothing particular. If there is, this is our moment to acknowledge it. Make our way onto our hands and knees into tabletop position. And starting to maybe explore cat cows can feel nice. Or we can free move the body. Sometimes it's nice to close the eyes and allow it to be a very internal movement. Seeing how the spine ripples the effect all the way out to the fingers, the toes. We don't have to stay with the knees down or the feet. We can explore where we need to in our bodies. And you can open the eyes and maybe even looking around or looking at your body, connecting this way. You can use your hands to feel parts of the body as they move. Don't be afraid to bring in some touch into your practice. This is your body. 
You can notice sensations, awarenesses, connections. Now you have the choice to either come into child pose, if you need a break, something softer, or we can make our way into downward facing dog. And neither of these poses have to be still. I'm a proper wiggler, I love a wiggle. You might want to be still today, and that's also okay. And you can wiggle forward and back, or just play with little elements of rippling. Now, if you're in downward facing dog, you can either stay here or you can come into tabletop. And the same for child's pose. Make your decision either tabletop or down dog. We're going to lift the right leg up to the sky and move that leg. Move from the toes, knee, hip, your shoulders can go. Let's get out of that rigidity of our yoga practice. We are not linear creatures, we are spirals. We move in these beautiful directions, so we don't have to move in one way. And if we're in tabletop position, remember there's still plenty of access to the body here. It's just a little less intense in the shoulders, the hands, the wrists. Good. Now if we're in down dog, we might want to shift forward into plank pose, drawing the right knee in or we can drop the left knee down, holding. Let's feel the fire in the body start to ignite, keeping the breath still there. What can we connect to as we hold? We lower the right knee back down underneath the right hip and extend the left leg away. Maybe reach the right arm forward. Rather than making this into a back bend, we're thinking about lengthening, expanding from toes to fingers connecting to what we experience right in this moment. The left knee will drop down to the floor and will reach the right arm up into a twist. Now you can thread that right arm underneath the left armpit, maybe dropping the right ear down to the floor or not. And we can stay here and start to play with twisting up with the left arm, or we can keep the movement with the right arm going, opening and closing, Experiencing that movement, if we need that. And if we're holding the position, maybe you want to play with extending the left leg back, the right arm over the head, and just feeling where we want to go with the body. Just remember, we can't get this movement wrong. The movement is part of the experience that we're having today. Now, wherever we are, we're going to come all the way back up. The right arm is going to cross under the left, either eagling the arms as we come to kneeling or grabbing hold of the shoulders. We're pulling the elbows up and away from the chest in either variation. Just be gentle with your neck. You can either tuck your chin in if it feels too strong for your neck or just gently raise the chin up. It doesn't have to be a deep back bend. And then free it out, release, take some free movement. Maybe close the eyes if the self-conscious awareness kicks in. And just feel how we move from the center out to the limbs. And then make our way back. Tabletop, child pose, or downward facing dog. How much energy do you have? What can we connect to as we feel into the intensity of our bodies? Do we need movement? Do we need stillness? Left leg's going to lift up either in tabletop position or down dog and we move it around. We can always play with both poses. So if we decide to drop the right knee down at any moment, we can. And don't worry if your shoulders move here. So allow the shoulders to move. Explore the connecting awareness that our bodies spiral and twist in all different shapes, different ways. And how amazing it is that we might move one part of the body and that shift that energy all the way through to another. Good, if we're in tabletop position, maybe just draw the left knee to the chest or if we're in down dog, bring into plank position, holding. Left knee pulls into chest as we feel the heat rise in the body. Maybe noticing the heartbeat increasing, the breath starting to speed up. Then we'll drop the left knee underneath the left hip and extend the right leg back. Maybe reach the left arm forward. 
holding here, but keep the rhythm of your breath going. Connecting to maybe the ground, that force of the hand having to push into the earth. Let the right knee come down to the floor, twist the left arm up. And we glide it underneath the right armpit, maybe smoothly coming down and up. It might be nice to feel the movement here. Or you can pause in this position, thread the needle pose, perhaps lifting up the right arm. Maybe the right leg goes somewhere. And can you notice as you move your body? No, it doesn't have to look like a specific yoga pose. But connect to what you're feeling through the different layers of your body, so physical, energetic, emotional, mental. Right hand comes back down to the floor, lift back up. Now the left arm's gonna cross under the right, maybe eagle the arms or grab the shoulders and lift the elbows up. Remember, chin can tuck in or the head can follow as we expand into a bit of a back bend. Squeezing the buttocks a little bit here to support your lower spine and then release. Moving around freely. And we'll step forward with the right leg coming into a lunge. Now your knee can go over your toes. Dun, dun, dun. In every yoga class you might be told, you must keep your knee in line with your ankle. No, let it go, let it move. That's what our legs are designed to do. These ankles are designed to be flexible so the knee can travel as far over the toes as possible. So explore the stretch in the Achilles tendon, the ankle joint. Obviously, if you experience pain in the knee, back off. We don't want to feel pain in our bodies. And you may want to engage the glutes a little bit so that you may protect the lower back. I like to swim my arms backwards in this variation. So connecting the sensations from the hip to the fingers. Oh, it feels so nice. We'll take another breath. Fingertips will come down to the floor either side of the right foot. Let's tuck the left toes, lift the left knee. And we can either hop that foot in and then just lift it up as high as it wants to go into that standing split. We do not matter, it does not matter how high the leg goes. We're feeling the connection of the back leg to the leg that's supporting us. Maybe if you feel the ground underneath your hands or your fingers or the blood flushing to the face, we're looking for connection not how flexible we might be. And then we'll place the left foot next to the right, coming into our chair position. So feet can be together or hip distance. Arms can grow up to the sky or wherever they feel comfortable. Weight is into the heels and we're holding. Then place our hands to the thighs and wiggle it out. Move. Feeling again the connections from the earth, up the limbs, to the torso, to the head, to the arms. Then find your chair position again. Maybe lift onto the balls of the feet. Raising the arms up and perhaps straightening the legs. Coming all the way up to balancing on the balls of the feet. Take an inhale. As we exhale, the heels will drop or fold with a sigh. <sighs> Curling up slowly. Reach the arms up to the sky, maybe raising up onto the balls of the feet. Coming all the way up. Almost lost my balance. <laughs> Heels come down, big sigh. <sighs> and we can dangle here for a moment. And then we'll step back with the right foot coming into that lunge. And again, the knee can go over the toes. We can play with movement in the hips, feeling what's happening. So connecting from the earth upwards, maybe taking this movement into the upper body. You can swim the arms back or make any movement with the arms that feels interesting. Remember your head, your face, through your face muscles around. Everything's connected here. Fingertips will come down to the ground, either side of the left foot, tuck the right toes. Hop the foot in or kick it up to the sky, standing splits. Again, not worrying about how high that leg goes, but feeling the stretch, particularly this left leg is going to expand and it's going to feel intense. So connect to where you want to explore. 
right foot will drop down to the floor next to the left, come into our chair pose, arms can go where they're comfortable, sinking in, so feeling that heaviness into the earth from your feet, your thighs are activating, core will engage organically, then we might raise up onto the balls of the feet, maybe reach the arms up high as we straighten the legs. Everything starts to have to activate as we inhale, heels drop down, big sigh. <sighs> Curling up slowly. Smoothly feel the connections of your vertebrae as you raise up, coming onto the balls of the feet, lifting the arms up to the sky, inhale. Exhale. <sighs> angle position. Maybe just floating here, letting the weight of the head elongate the lower back, so allowing it to be an anchor. And we'll curl up slowly through the spine, arriving in our mountain position, Tadasana. And the hands can come to a part of the body that we want to connect to. You have two hands, so maybe your hands want to go to different places. Maybe closing the eyes or keeping the gaze soft. What does it feel like to touch this part of your body that you want to hold? Feel the power of your own hands. We'll step back with the left leg to our warrior two. Now, your warrior two can be a held, strong warrior two. That might be what you need. Or you can move this around and you have such amazing ability in your body. Regardless of how we limit our bodies, think of all the different connecting ways you might want to move. You don't have to keep your feet glued into the floor. But you might also want to come in and out of your warrior two. Maybe you want gentle movements or fast flowing movements. And then we'll turn our feet to the long edge of the mat. We're gonna take some fruit picking moments. So fruit picking, thinking about reaching, pulling in and use the whole body, reach, grab, pull. Think about how we pick maybe an apple from a tree or a berry from a bush. And your feet, again, don't have to glue to the floor. We wrap around and open. And reminding yourself that your body is a spiral. There are no straight lines in your body. How beautiful, all curved, spirally. So moving in ways that feel kind of important for keeping the function of our body going. Okay, we'll turn back to the top of the mat. Coming into a lunge position, we'll use the hands and the breath. So we'll inhale, pull the breath into the nose. Exhale, we can either just take an extended lunge or we can push the air out into our warrior three. Inhale, draw the air in through the nose. Exhale, push the air out. Lunge or warrior three. One more, inhale, drawing it in. Exhale, pushing it out. Coming to stand back into your mountain pose, hands can go to a part of your body you want to connect to. You can be different from the last place. Let's step back with the right leg, warrior two. Remember, this can be a still, held, strong warrior two. It can also be a moving, explorative warrior two. And that means it can turn into different poses technically. Remember, we're coming from that foundation and we're able to move out of it. When we feel secure, safe, we then can be adventurers. That doesn't necessarily mean we need to move. The adventure might be the held st stableness and feeling the sensations rippling through the intensity of holding a pose, the thoughts that might be coming in as we hold. One more breath. 
And then we'll turn the toes to the long edge of the mat, come back to our fruit picking. We reach and pull, reach and pull. Our hands also moving. Our feet can move. Think about all the berries we pick off the bushes. I know technically we're not meant to pick berries from low down. <laughs> That's because animals tend to urinate and munch on them. So we might want to go higher. Oh, but for the sake of our practice day, we can go low. Good, let's turn back to the top of the mat into that lunge position. We're gonna pull the air in with the hands, inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the nose, either extended lunge or warrior three. Bringing that in and pushing it out. So we're drawing the awareness out into our external environment and then in to our internal environment and out. Back into our Tadasana mountain pose. Let's take a breath in as we reach the arms up. Palms connect, hands to the heart center. Feel your hands connect as one. Chin will tuck to the chest and we'll roll down vertebrae at a time, all the way down. You can keep your legs straight. You might want to bend your knees. And when we get down into this lower position, let's heel toe the feet out. Now we have two options here. Squat, keeping the feet grounded. Try just to check that the knees are in line with the toes so we're not sinking in to put pressure on the ligaments of the knees. You can always lift your heels off the floor. If this feels too much for your body, drop your bum to the earth and bring the feet a little bit further in front and then we can fold in this way. So it's a little bit easier on the hips, the ankles. If you need support underneath your bum, you can take that, so a cushion, bolster, a book even, if you don't have the yoga blocks. And maybe the hands just connect back into the earth. We feel the solidity of the ground, the softness maybe of our mats. Maybe the eyes are open and we're just watching. Maybe the eyes are closed and we're watching from the inside. If your bum is still floating off the floor, let's release the bum down to the earth. Extend the legs forward. Now, this is where we might eat our bolster or our pillow. I'll show you with both. Now, if we're using a pillow, we bring the pillow behind us so that our shoulder blades kind of are in the center and our head will drop off and land to the floor. So our shoulders, our head, go off the top end of our pillow. So it's a gentle opening through the chest. If you're using a bolster, we can bring the bolster close towards the lower back. Let the bolster go out lengthways behind you and melt the spine all the way down. Maybe opening up the arms and relaxing. If you need a pillow under the head to support the neck, you can. And just allow your body to soften, connecting to the stillness and all the interesting elements that awaken when we are still. What is it within your body that you can sense and connect to? Remember that can be physical, emotional, mental, energetic. Maybe everything's kind of collaborated together. It's like a collage of all these different aspects of yourself painting of all different colors representing different parts of you. Maybe they're messy on the canvas or perhaps it draws a very particular picture or pattern. We don't always have to like what we see, but the fact that we can see it 
gives us the opportunity to explore either its meaning or perhaps just appreciate its presence. Drawing the feet into the floor, we're going to roll off the bolster into fetal pose. I'm going to bring my pillow with me. You can bring your arm under the head if you need to. And get into a comfortable, small shape. Cuddling inwards. Resting. We're allowed to be comfortable in our bodies, in our practice. It's okay to welcome this in. Remember, you can always keep your eyes open. Sometimes it feels more safe to keep the eyes open than to close them. Opening the eyes is not always just a distraction, but it can be a way to focus, to feel connected to your space around you. Maybe listening to the sounds around you. Feeling your environment through hearing. Maybe there's been a particular sound that's been happening the whole way through the practice. If you're playing music, maybe it's in the moment that you appreciate the music. And then we'll slowly roll onto the back, maybe shifting the bolster out of the way. Letting the legs, the arms go straight up to the sky, our bug pose. And you might want to shake, wiggle, vibrate, anything that just helps some of the movement from the fingers, the feet, start to shift down the legs and the arms back to the torso. Maybe closing the eyes if that feels good for you and so you can really almost imagine the movement of fluid slithering down the limbs and you can feel that connection by the warmth or coolness of your blood, of your lymphatic system, of your energy moving through your body. You don't have to keep your arms or your legs straight. You can still come back to movement if you need it. And then hug the knees in towards the center. Make as small as a position as you'd like. Maybe the chin comes in. Maybe we scrunch up the face. We pull everything in. Tiny, tiny pose. And then let's take up as much space as possible into our star shape. So spreading your arms out, your legs out, take up as much space as you possibly can in your environment. We're often told we need to be small and take up as little space as possible. I want you to be able to feel big and own this space that is yours right now. Connect to every part of your space you would like to. And then we'll finally just come back to Shavasana, where we began. Maybe the hands want to rest into a part of the body. Maybe they want to drape down the sides of the body. If you need some warmth, a blanket or a bolster under the knees, a pillow under the head, get comfortable for our final few minutes together where we get to relax. All that connecting we've been thinking of and observing, we get to let that go mentally and just stay with the connections that are always going to be here, the subconscious connections our body makes. And I will let you know when it's time to rise out of this pose.
your awareness back to your body. Now you are more than welcome to stay here for as long as you need. Or if you're ready to move out of the stillness, choose parts of your body you would like to explore with movement, with awareness. Gently encouraging your body to lengthen, maybe rotations in ankles, wrists, perhaps a big stretch, maybe a yawn, a sigh. <sighs> the knees can guide into the chest as we perhaps rock from side to side. Maybe allowing your body to fall all the way to one side and pausing there for a moment. As we make our way slowly, gradually, up into a seated position, come back to that part that you feel connected to. And notice if it has a location in your body, if it was an emotion or a thought, a colour. And bring the hands, maybe, and place them onto that part of your body. If it's an area that we can't physically connect to, we can take a visualisation of our hands, placing to that part of our body. We're holding and connecting towards ourselves. Recognising how it feels for us to connect inward. And even if this experience might be painful, difficult, beautiful, peaceful, you're staying with the authentic experience of discovery as we connect to our bodies. Releasing either metaphysically or metaphorically or physically. We'll sweep the hands up to the sky. Take an inhale. Reach the arms up as the palms connect. And draw the hands down to the heart centre. The thumbs can gently press into the heart. Feeling the heart beating, the breath still moving. Gently bow your head forward and thank yourself for your practice today. Exploring connection in all the wonderful ways you deserve to. Namaste. Well done, everybody, and thank you for joining me.